Hey, good morning, folks. It's your host out here uh, coming out to you from Las Vegas, Nevada with Las Vegas Free Press. We're at this rally for Byron, justice for Byron Williams. He was murdered in police custody and what started it was he had no light on his bike. So let's go check it out, folks. Let's go check it out. So that's the next step. And like I said, we are prepared to take direct action. Whether you got civil disobedience, boycotting, disrupting business as usual. We don't want to keep seeing the, the, the coffee with the mayor and the mayor is quiet. Business as usual will be disrupted until justice is served. That's right. Any other questions? Will there be more protests? Absolutely. There will be more actions. That's a better way to put it. Um, stretch. Earlier today, you said that um, there were folks at back group meetings that weren't here, that were there and were happy to show up earlier. Um, is this something that you see routinely in these situations? Because I know this is the first time that you've had protests and folks have been out here because they'll be a media who has killed somebody. But is this also a part of the routine that we don't see? Well, thank you for that question. Absolutely. Everybody's calling himself a community leader. But when it's time to be with the community that you say you lead in, you know where to be found. I sat in a meeting on Thursday at the Piston Community Center with over 40 people. I don't see not one here today. Except for the family member that was present. You media, you, 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 you the people's media, you don't count. I'm talking about these so-called community leaders. That's what I'm talking about. So just being realistic, out of 43 showed up. The people's media, me, and the, and the family member. Come on now. Now I understand some were there who could, who I know for genuine reasons can't be here. I, I can contest to that. I'm not gonna say names, but I know for genuine reasons could not be here and I was notified of that. But there are some who was doing the most talking, the most questioning, community leaders and pastors, I'm the only clergy here today. So everybody, I'll put it like this, everybody in the front ain't a leader. Right. Everybody who's a pastor of a particular faith ain't a leader. Right. You're a leader by standing with the people. You're not a leader by having a meeting telling us to be engaged and to come to the police and to come, to come, 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 to them. And when it's time to actually do some work, you know where to be found. What type of leadership is that? Real leaders stand with the people. Real leaders adopt for the people. Real leaders lead the people. Not leading in the front, but leading next to them. But everybody's a leader. So I, I thank you for that question because it's a thousand community leaders, but only 20 of us, 30 of us, 40 of us out here today. I have no understanding for that. Nor will I, will I ever, probably. So thank you for that question. Any other questions? Uh, you can find a video on Facebook for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. I then now it. we're going to close out the press conference, but there are any other last questions? Yeah. When she's getting that interview? Any other last comments? First, let's have a moment of silence. We're going to say Byron Williams' name three times and honor him. Byron Williams. Byron Williams. Byron Williams. Byron Williams. Byron Williams. Byron Williams. One more time. Long live. Byron Williams. Long live. Byron Williams. Long live. Byron Williams. And justice for all of those who have lost their life, as the sister stated, and as we agree and we say, police terrorism. Take the word brutality out of your vocabulary today. It is called terrorism. That's it. That's the only way we can put it. Brutal terms for brutal realities. We are past the word brutal. It's terror. 
when somebody can kill your life and you have the nerve to be put on paid leave, you're getting a paycheck, you travel the world of your best life, and a family has to bury a loved one, the worst ain't even over for them. They still have to deal with the, the, their loved one who's passed on top of this. That's not right. It's not right. We have been requested to do a prayer. We are, are going to be respected to, we know all of those who do not subscribe to prayer or particular religion. So I'm going to try to be as general as I can. If you want to join, you can do so. Protect them as we know, standing up for justice, standing up for those who have lost their life unjustly is a dangerous cause. We know that without any risk, change cannot be taken. We ask you to look down on the family, touch them and give them strength as they try their best to not only bury a loved one, but to also fight for justice. Give them the courage to speak when they don't want to speak, to stand when they don't want to stand, to lead when leading is not comfortable for them. Bless all the organizers, all the community members who've come out today to stand and to demand justice. We pray that justice is served. We pray that those officers who pled and who led and who played a role into Byron Williams' death, they come to justice. We ask all these things in your name we pray, amen. All power to the people. All power to the people. And don't y'all forget that. You have power. There's power. The next steps, and we will circulate this, we're going to have some political education classes on the things that we can know to gear ourselves up when it comes to dealing with the law, dealing with us as a community. We have to police ourselves. So we need to get equipped. And that would be one of the next steps that we're going to do. As far as our action is taking place, we're going to let the family do their thing as far as investigating the case, and as more things come out, we're going to do our job and our our um, responsibility of supporting the family as we ask for justice. But like I said, and this is not a threat. This is a definitely a declaration and a promise. If we don't see some progression in this case, we're not waiting six months. I, that's what I was told the other day. We're not waiting down on me. We're going to have a militia or, you know, none of that. But we're going to do it in a way where we're going to shut it down. Yeah. Traffic will get stopped. Yeah. Businesses will not be supported. Politicians will not get our support. National and local. Until we see some things being done. And those who you see that are quiet privately, if they can't come out publicly and say something, don't support them. That's right. If you support me privately but can't support me publicly, you're not to be trusted. That's right. Because you have any integrity. Somebody say integrity. If you have any integrity, you're going to do the right thing. Right. And you're going to say something that's going to change the laws and the policies for the people that well, we can feel safe. So thank you guys for coming. Without any further ado, there's any other statements from the community? No justice. No, no peace. peace. No racist. Police. No justice. No peace. No racist. Police. What do we want? Mm -hmm. Justice. What do we want? It? What do we want? Justice! What do we want it? Now! Hey, hey! Oh, ho, ho! These racist cops, they, they got, got the go. go! Hey, hey! Oh, ho, ho! These racist cops, they, they got the go! go. Hey, hey! Oh, ho, ho! These racist cops, they got the go! Ho, ho! Ho, ho! These racist cops, they got the go! No justice! No peace! No racist! Police! No justice! No peace! No racist! Police! All right, y'all, stay tuned for the next episode. Power to the people. Power to the people! This is that new uh, uh, iPhone, iPhone 11. It's going to come for a quick interview for the people's media. <clears throat> uh, I'm here with uh, Kelly Peterson. Uh, I'm sorry. Could you say your name? Suddenly I forget it. Ke Kelly Patterson, who's a very act, you know, very big activist here in Las Vegas. Could you tell us uh, who, who you represent, what your group is called? Uh, the Nevada Cop Block. Okay. Cap Radio. Okay, and uh, can, can you tell us where we can find those if somebody wants to go online and look for it? You can go to nvcopblock.org and the Cap Radio. Okay, great, and that's also available on Facebook, correct? Okay, so um, can you tell us what Cop Block does? Cop Block and, and ACAP Radio? Well, Cop Block, Cop Block is essentially an extension of Cop Watch. Mm -hmm. and it's just more of an informational mm -hmm. that we encourage people to film the police. They uh, try to bring attention to abuse. 
Okay, and do you encourage uh, people here in the Las Vegas area, in Nevada, to submit uh, uh, videos? Is there a way to do that? Yeah, there's, there's a submission tab on the website. Okay, great. And can you tell us about ACAB Radio? ACAB Radio is, is um, it's a collaboration between Queen Up Bombs, Las Vegas, and Ottawa. And basically, it's, uh, it's a podcast, and we cover the Go over the stories that we cover on the so. Okay, great. Do you have any co host on that uh, on ACAB Radio? Joey Lukowski. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us? Uh, uh, you, you had a serious case. I believe it was filed as a, a federal uh, uh, lawsuit uh, in an encounter with the police, correct? Uh, I, have, I currently have three. Okay, C could you tell us about? Uh, I'm specifically talking about the one where he told you to stop recording and, and, and you got arrested. So I was on Fremont Street and I saw a woman being arrested, so I started filming. Uh, the police officer approached me and told me to move along, and uh, I refused to do that and continue filming. He later admitted in a deposition that the reason that he was paying attention to me was because I was filming. The reason it, he wanted to arrest me was because I refused to stop filming, and that if I would have stopped filming, he would not have arrested me. So I, was, so I was arrested for that. Right. And um, could you describe how you were arrested? Um, like, what did the police do? The, well, 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 the description I heard was that they pushed you into the street and then charged you they, for pedestrian and roadway. They, they <laughs> basically threw me in the street and charged me with illegally being in the street. Uh, and did they physically accost you? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, did you have, sustain any injuries? Yeah. I had I had injuries, but they were like fairly minor. They were serious injuries. Uh, and and were there any uh, any disciplinary actions against any of the police involved? Um, I, I have a lawsuit going right now, but that would be the only sort of repercussions. So so Metro. Uh, Found found no wrongdoing in what he, in, in what the officer they, did. Well, they did actually. They had an, an internal affairs investigation, and they found. They said that they had his supervisor have a conversation. Oh yeah, and that you know that's that's always the best way. I think you know punish in private. Yeah. The lawsuit, the, the officer himself will not have any sort of Right, right, right. Because uh, the the state covers it. Okay, so um. Oh boy, I had a I had a question, but now I forget it. <laughs> that uh, uh, of that arrest online? Yeah, it is on YouTube. Okay, and weren't you also? Uh, wasn't it also featured in, in the film What Happened in, in Vegas? Yes, and what happened in Vegas? Uh, my earlier case for with being arrested for shocking, basically being uh -huh. arrested for protesting the Vegas. Right, and that and that was right here, right? Right. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. So I uh, I encourage everyone to watch what happened in Vegas. It, it's it's a great movie. It, it really shows the corruption in, in the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Okay, Kelly. Thanks for taking your time. And, uh, so uh, this is uh, Prince Vegeta News and News, News Network. Network and Travel on, on the internet, and uh, he'll he'll put that he'll put this interview up later. Okay. Of your family, but also like what you were saying that caused what's going through your mind. Um, thankful, thankful because uh, we knew pops, uh, and the only introduction that the rest of the new community got to him, it wasn't um, the best light, you know. And to hear some of the things that were said on the tape. Just the presence of the community here directly contradicts what they said to him. They were some of the last words that he heard, you know, so I'm grateful uh, for the people that took this effort to be here today. And lastly, you know, the term police brutality has been turned around, but so has police terms. What do you all mean by that? What message do you want to send the community about this particular Well. I've been in Las Vegas for about 17 years. Um, I went to school in this community. I received my post-secondary education in this community. I work in this community. 
So I shouldn't be afraid of the police. My son shouldn't be afraid of the police. Nobody that lives or comes to this community should be afraid of the police. So that's what that term police terrorism means. We should not be victim, we should not be criminalized by what we did in the past. You know, especially if we paid that debt to society. Um, and that's not okay. You know, the police should not be allowed to spin their narrative. You know, and allow us, and make us as a family, and us as a community, have more questions and answers. You know, that's not okay. So that's what we're demanding from not only the police, but also the legislation. You know, because we should be, we should want to work in this community. You know, and these type of things can turn. Um, we have uh, a tank council. Uh, so uh, that information will be coming out for them. Uh, what, what's your opinion on uh, activists and citizen journalists? Do you have a message for her? Keep doing it. Because um, a lot of times, and especially in this case, this is a, an example of how so many things could have been done differently. Um, there was a, a, a local or smaller organization that broke the story for us. And we're thankful, we're, we're grateful. My family is grateful. You know, so to those people that are not in mainstream media, keep doing it. You know, um, your work is not in vain. It's, it's, it's spelled by so many people. So I say thank you and I say keep doing it because it's unfortunate that this will not be the last Byron Williams, you know. And I think it's unrealistic to you know to say that, but you know the realist the realism of it is that we'll be out here again, you know, for someone else's family. You know, but I'm I'm hoping that for my family and for the officers that are involved, we're gonna make those officers think twice because there will be um, accountability that needs to be held. Uh, the journalist who uh, broke that was Nisa Soon in Force Trajectory Project, correct? Correct. And she's here, as far as I know. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, so you guys heard that at the end of the video. It's pretty, pretty cool. It's sad to lose someone. We're going to put that, I mean, disrupting traffic, disrupting public, um, public safety. We have to, because how can we expect those who are breaking us to build us? We have to demand that you do something. This goes from the politicians down to the police. Both of them are just as guilty in some regards because both of them are being silent. Um, have you heard anything from Representative Stephen Horsford, who's over CD4, where this uh, incident happened? Not yet, but we're going to uh, send him a letter and reach out to him. I, don't, I want to believe that uh, Congressman Horsford is going to stand with us. That hasn't been conveyed to me yet, but that's, you know, I can't. I can't knock somebody who has not showed me where, where they stand yet. So until I know exactly where he stands, I'm going to believe Stevens with us. He just hasn't got word yet. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to believe that he will say something. All of those. I, I do want to say that William McCurdy, who is over this district with the assembly, uh, he seems to appear to be to me like he's engaged, he's involved. He called the meeting, he made some statements that I don't believe he would have made in front of the police if he was not about that life. So I know he's one of the politicians who I do have good faith in to believe that he's going to do the right thing and get some legislation on the table that can protect community and families from police yeah, terror. Like it's hard. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Fred. You, Charlie, appreciate man. you again. People mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. definitely. Always a pleasure. Always, Always a pleasure. Can I ask you a quick question, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, what do you think, do you have any opinions on cop watchers, uh, Vegas auditors? Um, and do you do you want other people or think they should go out and also record interactions? I think we should cop watch, but we want to be careful with that as well because they're trying to make it where if we cop watch, or you in 20 some feet, or you in my, you're disrupting me from doing my job, I'm going to arrest you. So we don't want people to walk into the trap. But what I suggest is if we're going to cop watch, be smart about it, go in groups. There's so many things I can say. I'd rather not really say um, on a public note because we don't want to give up the tools. But I'm not against cop watching. But I, I believe that cop watching is a very beneficial part of movement work. But we also need to not only cop watch, but hold cops accountable whether you watch them or not. Mm -hmm. When you find out a cop mistreated somebody, whether you got it on film or not, step out and do something. 
you know, so there's plenty of cop watchers, but we need to make sure that the cops that you're watching, you're going to hold accountable and not get scared when you find out that you can be in trouble if your footage is released. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, man. Appreciate Thank you, brother. It. Appreciate it. JP. Hey, yeah, we hey, both we both have a couple. Uh, I got a case. I was just walking, watch activism, and um, there's already several people who have been attacked by the police here. You know, thanks a lot. What we do in life echoes in eternity. MappingPoliceViolence.org is a uh, organization I follow, and they produced some statistics that were, um, I think, between 2013 and 2017, 41 people were killed by Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, and um, in the last 30 years, it's been over 200 people that have been killed by this department, not Nevada Police, but this department. So I don't have statistics for the whole state. No, that's okay. Um, but in terms of prosecution, they haven't in, in prosecuted anyone for taking a civilian life in over 30 years in, regard, in terms of on-duty police officers. Because the last one that was uh, the killer of Daniel Mendoza, the supposed killer, um, is serving a life sentence, which is very strange. And he was off-duty when he was when he allegedly killed Daniel Mendoza back in 2001, I want to say, or 1999 or something, a long time ago. Yeah, but he's the only officer currently in prison. Do you prison. have the business card or something yes. like that that I can write yes. Thank you. My name is Kevin. Nice to meet you as well. I didn't get one. Oh, yeah, you did. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Girl, I'll take that. All right. All right. I appreciate yeah. it. Any no problem. other, you know, any, any other, questions, just yeah. hit me up. Yeah, I'm happy to work with, with y'all. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Ready for an interview? Sure, sure. Hi, uh, I'm I'm here with Nisa Soon. Sun. Sun. Could could you pronounce? Could could you spell your name? Uh, N i s s a t z u n. Okay. And uh, do you have any websites or any other uh, online presence? Yes. So forcedtrajectory.com, which is forced like forced entry, forcedtrajectory.com. Okay, great. And it's also available on Facebook, right? Yep. Yes, we do have a Facebook page. Okay, great. Um, uh, could you tell us about um, your involvement in, in the Byron Williams case, uh, sure. how, how, you, how you came about to uh, sure. uh, find out about it? So, sure. okay. so a friend of mine tagged me on Dr. Jeffrey, who's the stepson, on his post because he had just, it was Saturday afternoon and he had just seen the tape of what happened to his stepfather. And when now, when was this? This was Saturday afternoon. And, oh, and could you remind us when 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 did when did Byron uh, Williams die? That was Thursday morning. 
So three days later, basically. Yes. Three, okay. day, three days later, he made a post online on Facebook, and a friend of mine who knew b both of us tagged me because he knew the work that I did. Mm -hmm. And so then I called uh, Dr. Jeffrey immediately. I contacted him on Facebook, and uh, he... I thought it was a different case. I thought it was the Roy Scott case, which happened back in March, um, because he didn't mention any names or anything like that, and it was an in-custody death. So I was like, oh, they finally released the tape of this guy, you know, this other victim. Right, right. And then he was like, no, 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 that's not, this, this is a new case. And I'm like, new case? How come I haven't heard about it? You know, because usually the media is on top of it, like, the day the day it happens, right? Right, they make some quick... They make some, like, yeah. they might not even release the name. They say something. Somebody died in custody, right, right, right? right? So so then I was just like, wait, the media hasn't reported it? And he was like, yeah, nobody has reported it. And I said, well, what was LVMPD's response? And he said, oh, we, we already have um, a press conference planned for 3 o'clock on Monday. So I was like, this is Saturday. Like, first of all, the police department operates 24-7. It's not like it's, like, off on the weekends. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that just doesn't make any sense. So I decided to meet with the family, and I got to meet them. I spent several hours with them, and um, you know, I got their initial responses, their initial interviews, and then we put out the first story. And are there videos of that? I have video of their first. Do you first plan on putting it up at some point? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will it be on on YouTube also? It will be on YouTube. It will be on our website, forcetrajectory.com, and also our Facebook. And Force, is, what, is your YouTube Force Trajectory Project too? No, it's ACD Media Channel. Um, ACD Media Channel. A as an Apple, C as in Car, D as in David, Media Channel. Okay, thank That's you. That's our YouTube page, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have any advice uh, for people, for the community who have cameras? Maybe go out, record, any, any advice, anything? I would say that, especially when it comes to police interactions, mm -hmm. if you see something, say something. You know what I mean? Like if you see somebody getting pulled over, and you have camera equipment, cop watch, you know? Because mm. your, your witnessing of the interaction could potentially save the life of that person. Because I always say that police brutality or police terrorism stem, 100% of police terrorism stems from a police interaction. And so when we become witnesses for our fellow citizens and brothers and sisters on the street, we are actually serving as a witness to what's happening to them. So if you have people that are interested in media and using weaponizing media as a tool for human rights and civil rights, mm -hmm. when you see a stop, just witness, just be a witness, record it, because you never know what could happen. Um, and of course, what we would hope is that nothing happens, right? Yeah. Uh, but then sometimes, sometimes something does, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so um, being a witness is really important. Now in regards to when incidents are reported, um, I would say, you know, if if you're if you if you know someone who's been brutalized by the police, you're gonna have to, and you want to tell the story or you want to interview them. I would say interview them and then send it out to media. Of course, you guys can always send it out to myself and my team for Trajectory Project. Um, we do work on breaking news and um, cover cases of police police violence and misconduct. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, I mean, police con misconduct comes in many different forms, right? Yeah. It's not always just brutalizing a civilian. It could be, you know, police fraternizing with sex workers, which is not yeah. supposed to happen. It could be them uh, intimidating or following um, uh, witnesses or eyewitnesses or threatening uh, family members for standing up for their loved one. That happens as well, yeah. right? So there's many forms of police misconduct and we have to report it because, you know, the, the police and the system wants to say that it's only isolated cases that, oh, it's just this one case, we messed up on, no big deal. But when you look at the whole collective of all the people that have been brutalized and mistreated by the police, it's a lot, it's a mm. lot. It's not even yeah, funny, it's definitely. like, it's a lot. Of, it's like, we had a, a public hearing August 18th. Um, if you look it up online, if you look up public hearing on police misconduct, you'll, you'll find it. Mm -hmm. um, Nevada Current did a really good cover of it. Basically, we had over 100 um, people come and attend this public forum, and we had about 14 witnesses and victims and survivors come and testify on behalf of their loved one and also what happened to them. Mm -hmm. And there were cases of rape, there were cases of intimidation, there were cases of battery and assault, and there were cases of cover-up, and there were cases of shootings, and there were cases of homicide. So, I mean, it's just like, this is clearly a systemic issue, mm -hmm. and we, in order for us to see change, we have to confront it head on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Force trajectory. Force trajectory. I'll give you a card.
Yeah. Uh, was killed back in 2016. No, I'm sorry for that. Okay, can you just uh, tell us uh, about what happened? Um, October 12, uh, 2016, my husband um, was stopped. I want the same thing. That's, that's the lawyer mm -hmm. joke. So the idea that you can't get a police officer an indictment is very telling when the, the statement among lawyers is you can get an indictment on a grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah. What you're saying is a grilled cheese sandwich is more guilty than a police officer the police that killed officer. the black person. Yeah, or, or, or a pigeon out here shitting, you know what I'm saying, or a pigeon shitting mm -hmm. or something. I want to see these officers go to the penitentiary. I don't want to see you fired. Like I said, you can go to another city. A lot of people don't realize just because you're fired don't mean you can't go to another city and get a goddamn job. You can still get a job. I want to see you go to the penitentiary like you would do me if I killed somebody. I want you up under the penitentiary. He's guilty. Or whoever's connected with this case here. Whoever did what to Brian Williams, if it's not, well, just one cop, if it's two or three cops, they should all be locked up. All be locked up. That's what I'm saying. I don't know how many held him down all together. But as far as I'm concerned, the ones that held him down, and he said he couldn't breathe. 21 they, times. 21 times. As far as I'm concerned, they are, are guilty. Thank you so much. And they should be put up under the penitentiary. Okay? Thank you guys so Simple. Much. Appreciate it. All right. Otherwise, they don't want to wake up. When I, when I say get out there and patrol, get out there and patrol, get in those cops' faces, get in their faces. What you scared of? But then what happens is they wake up for how long before they, they, they you know, get too comfortable with their, their how they really are and they forget uh -huh. about it until something else happens again. And, and then, you, then you fall for the good cop, bad cop thing. Mm -hmm. The good cop, bad cop thing, uh oh. Some of these cops are trying to shake your hands. That's why I don't shake no cops' hands. I, don't, I make a practice of that. They'll put their hands out. Of yeah, yeah right good cop, there. bad cop. I let them know I'm about business. I'm not shaking your hand because I remember the past cases. The past cases where you guys were not found guilty. So I don't shake no cops' hands. That's just the way it is. We at war now. So I don't do that no more. Like when I was like maybe a teenager, I probably did it once or twice. I, man, I'm an I'm a older man now. And I do not shake cops' hands. I don't even allow people who are coming into the new Black Panther Party to shake hands with cops. Because then you get buddy, 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 and they play that good cop, black, uh, Take good cop, over there, yeah, you know, good cop, bad that. cop. Exactly. They want to play that they game. Like that we're, not, we're not all bad, and then the next day you got somebody rolling up on you, harassing you. Mm -hmm. Because you fell for that good cop, bad cop shit. Think, oh, well, I got to do my job. I'm yeah. do my job. Yeah. Yeah. Is this my job? No. Okay. Well, we, well, we got a job to do, too. Right. And I don't think we're doing the job. We're not doing the job. And like Stretch said, people, people are too scared. They scared, man. They scared. That's the about and they make all kind of motherfucking excuses. And I want to slap them, and pop them upside the head because they keep making excuses. The bottom line is, you want to have to sacrifice that job because you're worried about that job and your bills. I understand, but if you're going to be about this, be about it. Otherwise, you just all talk. Yeah. Get out the way. Is there, Get out the way. Is there a Facebook page anywhere in you? Um, these guys can find you. Oh, you can. Y'all can reach me at this number. You reach me at that number. That's how you reach me. Me at Black Friday's Liberation Party, Las Vegas chapter. There you guys go. Hey, thanks, folks. Yeah, that's how you reach me. All right, for sure. Have a good one. All right, take care. Yeah, let's get this one over here. Anyway, Michael. Yeah. Vanguard, freedom or death. Not recruiting. Join the okay. movement. <laughs> All right, nice. cool. I don't know anybody who works there, but... Oh, you did it. Excuse me, folks. Yeah. In terms of the turnout today and how the events went thus far, how are you feeling so far in, in, in regards to turnout and 